Hello there, Quicksilver Slash, and today we have a video courtesy of Savea driving the Tier 7 Japanese battleship, the Nagato. And I feel Tier 7 is often a tier forgotten, at least outside of ranked, because it's kind of in between. It's no longer the low tiers, but it's not really high tiers yet. I think 8 is really where people feel you've hit high tier play. And probably mostly because eight's when you first start seeing some tier 10s. But the Nagato was a very good ship for me. And Savea is, if I believe, grinding through it himself right now. And hopefully this game kind of gives a sense of what its play has been like overall. Now, these tier 7 battleships, whether it's the Nagato, the uh, Gneiss now or the Colorado, really do all need their upgrades. There's some ships that you can get away without the upgrades and have a good time, and I'd say the North Carolina is a good example of that. Out of the gate, the North Carolina is reasonably fast, has decent gun performance and gun range, but these Tier 7s really do rely on their extra hulls, engines, fire controls, guns, name it, they need it to really perform and feel like a decent ship. But once you put the time in or just dump the free experience in them to get those, they're very fun ships to play. Now, I personally preferred the Nagato to the Colorado. Despite similar ship designs, they kind of trade different things off. The Colorado, far and above, has better AA. The Nagato, I feel, just hits a little better. You know, it's... It just seems that its guns fly a little more true when you pull the trigger. And then the nice now, well, it is all about the speed. Unfortunately, Savea overleads that first shot at the Farragut. With destroyers, it can be tricky, especially if they are slamming on the brakes or turning because, you know, you base it on, well, what if they're doing full speed? Here's where I need to aim, and you pull the trigger. Now, speaking of, uh, or just not really speaking of, but looking at the map and thinking about it, he is playing alongside another one of my buddies, Flying Goomba, who has kind of sailed off alone, it looks like, and is probably in a bit of trouble, but it's not a replay on my channel unless Goomba explodes, so <laughs> we'll be waiting for that to happen, as it looks like the majority of the team is kind of content hanging around about around the base. And that's not a bad thing. It's not always a good thing. Uh, a lack of direction can often cost a team, but sometimes just being a little more passive at the start and staying here at base as Goomba sinks to uh, enemy Benson shells, you know, it can work out in the long run because you're not going to get caught out with, you know, half the team up where that Miyoko is, unable to defend as the enemy team pushes in. As it stands now, if that enemy team tries to start making a push, unless they are grouped up as four or five ships all coming around a corner at once, they're going to be singular targets and honestly will get hit and erased pretty quickly. Now, kind of like Goomba got caught over on the other side of that, this Farragut is definitely caught here. He has no gun support from his allies, and he's gonna sink. It's just a matter of time, and someone's just gotta dial them in as a pair of ships get exchanged there. Now, there are much juicier targets for Savea to shoot at, so he's not wasting his guns on the 200 remaining hit points of that Farragut. Instead, aiming for that fat broadside of a Mogami, and there it is, Twin Citadels, 35,000 damage, or just about. And in one volley, has basically shown a reason I don't like the Mogami. Now sure, the Mogami was sailing pretty flat at the time, but they did turn out not soon enough, and just got caught. And with a ship the size of the Mogami, you seem to get caught an awful lot, and accurate guns like the Nagatos... Well, they find their way 
into the center of your ship and just ruin your day. And we'll see if he can finish him off. You can see the Mogami had the rudder over to starboard. Savea aptly landed to loft his shells over the edge of land there. And one more citadel, one more kill. Or first kill in this case. 39,100 damage, all Mogami, and pretty much all Citadel. And that's just how the Nagato handled for me as well when I went through it. I just seemed to always hit things where I wanted and hard. And I can't say the same for the Colorado. Now the Colorado, you were pretty immune from... Uh, equal tiered aircraft, I'll say, comparatively for a battleship at the time. And consider I went through way back when, when the lines were first introduced. But this Nagato just, it's a good ship. I think I might still have mine in my harbor. I've kept a lot of the Japanese battleships because each one offered really a unique style of play. Now, the one downside to the way this game is unfolding is there's a lot of not a lot happening. The enemy teams all grouped up, they're kind of stationary. The friendly teams all grouped up, for the most part stationary. There's not a lot of close in, you know, fast and hard action. On Friday, well, yesterday, during my stream, I had a game in my Duke Adousta where I think 10 ships were all confined inside of one cap circle, just duking it out. And it is some of the most entertaining gameplay. But it's not really how you should think about approaching this game. And Savea's just slow sail up the kind of eastern edge of the map, working one target down at a time, you know, not really getting in over his head. That's where you really see dividends in World of Warships. Now, obviously, that's not what everyone wants. Some people want instant action right now and go charging in, get themselves killed, and it just doesn't work out, and it rarely will. Now, oh, Savea trying to use the little trick of hitting that map key to see over the hill, which I never do. I just kind of guess and find it's about as accurate. And then just get one overpen, up to 40,000 damage. And with this game half over, not a lot has happened. The enemy team lost a pair of destroyers and the Mogami. Friendly team is down a cruiser and flying Goomba. Beyond that, this has been a bit of a stalemate. But what that pretty much guarantees is the second half of this battle is going to be a little faster paced. Things are going to get pushed and they're just going to start happening. And where you see that happening is the Miyoko and Benson sailing into the enemy cap. It's forced the enemy team's hands as Savea's team loses their Arizona. And the reason it has, that Colorado shores New Mexico they have to get to that Benson, who's sitting happily in a smoke doing nothing. They're going to have to charge in. And fortunately for Savea, he's sitting in the perfect place to capitalize on some broadside on ships. Now, unfortunately, that Shores did get his rudder over and had it over already, so these aren't going to do too much, but they still connect with one shell, almost 4,000 damage. And. Now we're starting to get towards dueling range. New Mexico is about to cross the 10 kilometer barrier, as is the shores. And once you get inside 10k, battleships and cruisers interaction becomes a lot different. The cruiser can no longer really just weave. You get so close at that point that, you know, the shores, Savea can just punch the shells right through his bow if need be. And 
he's close enough that the accuracy is there to do just that. A big hit, 13,558, and I think the Shores might fall victim to these Benson's torpedoes. You can see his rudder is over, and there's the torp. So the next target I'd be focusing on is that New Mexico because A, you have shots at him, and B, he's on low health. Get rid of a ship. It looks like he is going to manage to duck all those torpedoes, takes a hit from the friendly New Mexico, and Savea drops 8600 damage in, just about finishing him off. One more good volley from any of the ships up here should have him. And you can see the Benson has just been sitting behind this island, keeping himself safe. Now, if the enemy team doesn't get into the cap circle, well, that's going to be capped out pretty quick here. And that's where things really get interesting. The New Mexico tried to push in, got finished off, and now you've got a Colorado here who doesn't really seem too interested in getting into the cap. Just shooting over his shoulder, it looks like at the New Mexico with HE. And the Edinburgh on the enemy team, I think, realizes what is happening, and you can see him. He is charging for the cap. If one of those enemy players doesn't get inside this circle soon, it's game over. And there's not a lot of time left for that Edinburgh to do much, but the Benson has sailed out from behind the island. And that is a big misplay in my mind, because he's in detection range now. You can see, based on the math, he's close to 5-something from the Edinburgh. He knew it was there. I don't know why the Benson went out, but now he's getting hit. All those cap points he'd spent so long saving up and working for are gone. The Edinburgh made it into the circle, and we've got a new game. Now, British cruisers have Hydro, so the odds of these Torps hitting them pretty low. But Savea's got guns, not torpedoes. 6,500 damage there, and the Benson will probably get to finish him off. There's the kill shot, and we can breathe for a second. But only a second, because now you have a pair of Colorados and a Benson charging in at him. And if I were Savea, I would be really hoping that friendly Benson was feeling generous and willing to bring a smoke. Now, fortunately, these Colorados are using HE, which, sure, Savea was nose on to... Uh, cooler than whatever but cooler than him has been using he pretty much this entire battle and that's just poor planning i don't understand some battleships insistence on just spamming he battleships do their damage with those massive citadels as you saw at the start of this game on that mogami rely on that learn to aim and count on that and you will do far better than just spamming HE a whole battle. Second set of turrets do a lot better than the first there. 12,300 damage, and it takes Savea over the 100,000 damage mark. And Savea's caught side on here. He can't turn because of all the torpedoes coming up his chuff. Although it looks like they just ran out, so he may be safe now to start angling. And personally, what I would be doing is probably turning out rather than in. And the reasoning there would be, with the Colorado behind him, if he turns out, he can put about a 30 degree to either one of those ships. By turning in, he would essentially have to do a big 270 degree turn to really get nose in. Now, that said, the Colorado behind him just ate some torps, is on fire, probably flooding. Savea gets a pair of turrets off. They connect but bounce. Next set, will these do better and finish them off? There's the kill, 5600 damage. And now there's one battleship to worry about, and that puts Savea in a much better situation. The Benson on Benson... Yeah, that's a bit of a stalemate, but the hipper is coming in, and that will really decide what's going on on the cap. And 
I think Savea gets cheeky here. Sees a ranger, decides to go for damage over working down. That uh, Colorado gets a kill, landing a pretty big hit there, finishing off the enemy ranger. So he's up to three kills, 125,000 damage, and really just this Colorado left. The Benson's in the cap, he's doing things. He's not a threat to Savea. The only thing Savea has to think about is this enemy Colorado and how to deal with him. And the enemy Colorado continues to fire back using HE, essentially saying, I don't care how I play, I'm just going to do this. And you can see the kind of damage Savea is doing back. That Colorado is not perfectly side on, but still, 7-ish thousand damage per two volleys there. A lot more than the couple thousand that Savea took plus a fire. And fires are repairable and take time to do the damage. Like, there are times and places to use HE. The way this Colorado has been playing this game, it's clear he just doesn't understand how to play. And that game may have started off a little bit slowly, but once that Mogami presented itself, it definitely picked up, starting off with a couple citadels followed by the kill, and then Savea just kind of rolled in towards their base and dealt with targets one at a time. And when you play like that, you get some decent results. 445,000 credits, just shy of 11,000 experience, so I'm guessing there's a little more involved in that. Uh, fireproof, Dreadnought, High Caliber, 142,000 damage, the four Citadels, most of those were on the Mogami, and four kills. So maybe could have snuck a Kraken in there if uh, he'd managed to finish off that Edinburgh with the one shot, but unfortunately he didn't, so he came up one medal shy. But really good game, and I thought this really showed off the strengths of the Nagato, and that really comes down to the gunnery. The ship's armor is okay, and it's going to behave a lot like the Colorado's, but just hitting targets where you aim is so nice, and the Nagato definitely does that. Top of team, 2,310 XP. I mean, not much more than you'd expect. Four kills, it's going to put you near the top, especially if you did the bulk of the damage in getting those kills. And I've seen com people complain about getting a bunch of kills and winding up at the bottom of your team. Well, it's because you're not doing the damage to go along with those kills. Like Savea did here, 50,000 to the Colorado, 39,110 to the Mogami. Uh, I've kind of stole the Ranger out from under a couple other ships and then finished the Colorado off. But he got damage into a bunch of other ships too, where those kills were kind of taken away from him. And at the end of the day, took home, uh, what, 360,000 credits, 11,000 experience, well, 10,396 experience, almost 25,000 for the commander. Definitely running some flags there. And why not get those commanders trained right up? And then it's just free XP for your other commanders to use. Anyways, thank you very much, Savea, for sending this one. I this one in. I enjoyed watching it. I hope all of you did. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to the channel. And as always, I'm Quicksilver Slash, and I'll have another one for you guys later.